Heavyweight Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Weathers and JEC International are proud to present our featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO. President at ringside is John Robinson from London, England. Supervisor is J. Danny Gill. Ringside physician is Dr. Shimobu Nakano. Timekeepers, Tetsuaki Iwakami and Toshiyashu Ishikami. Introducing the judges, scoring on the 10-point must system. Glenn Feldman from Avon, Connecticut. Eugene Grant from Plainfield, New Jersey. And Rocky Young from Miami, Florida. And the referee in charge from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Max Parker, Jr. This is for the WBO title, WBU. And now from NK Hall here in Tokyo, Japan, this is the main event scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger. He weighed in at 237 pounds. He wears black trunks. He comes to us from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His professional record unblemished at 20 wins, no defeats, all 18 wins by knockout. The hard punching, introducing Crawford, Terminator Grimsley. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 253 pounds. He wears the white trunks with red and blue trim. He is from Marshall, Texas. His professional record, an outstanding 74 wins, only four defeats, 67 big wins by knockout. In 1968, he was a US Olympic gold medalist. He went on to become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. He is a legend in the boxing circles in the heavyweight division. Tonight he makes his first defense of his title, introducing the current WBU heavyweight champion of the world, Big George Foreman. Once again, referee Richard Parker with final instruction. This bout is for the World Boxing Union World Heavyweight Title. For those who are professional, I'm just pointing to them in the box for both of the Bay Area Command. Both of them. Tell them what you both like. Touch gloves, come to boxing. The three reasons why George F Foreman is fighting here in Japan. One, he likes the uh, sound of making 400 million for the fight. Also likes the sound that he weighed in at 114 kilograms and uh, he can eat more sushi than cheeseburgers. But there is George, as light as he has been in six years in this comeback at 253. And Crawford Grimsley looking to make a name for himself here tonight. Right now, people aren't sure who exactly is fighting Foreman, whether it's Broderick Crawford or Will Grimley or Ed Grimley. And uh, Crawford Grimsley wants uh, people to know his name. He says in the ring, have his style. He says, I'm a boxer puncher. He says his punch, best punch is either one. He says, I don't know which one is my best. I can knock him out with the right hand or the left hook. Foreman has not fought for a year and a half after his uh, alleged victory over Axel Schultz in 12 rounds. Extremely controversial. And Foreman uh, refusing to give Axel Schultz the rematch, so he was stripped of the IBF title, which uh, Michael Moore then won. But George Foreman says that uh, he still deserves. He says, I won that title in the ring and can only lose it in the ring. Moore is now the champion, and I beat Moore. Well, without thinking, I guess Morrison would be the champion because he beat Foreman. <laughs> Which means Michael Bent should be the champion. Does he be more? You know, it all comes back to Tyson anywhere. Somewhere I should be, I should be the champion. If that's the case. Good right hand from Grimsley. But Grimsley throwing a lot of punches and hitting nothing. Take the side of Foreman's head. 
really missing the mark. The key Foreman is. Foreman not getting excited here, though. Yeah, the Foreman just his own pace. The key is if uh, Grimsley stays in front of him. Foreman will find him somewhere as he uh, took time to find Michael Moore. Who stayed in front of him late in that fight. One minute to go in round number one. It's scheduled for 12. This is a WBU heavyweight championship fight. Foreman, when he beat Schultz, was for the IBF and the WBU. All right, what stands in front of Grimsley, a man who has been down in 78 fights on only in three fights? against Muhammad Ali, against Jimmy Young, and against Ron Lyle. And the last of those fights coming in 1977. Yeah, he said he knows Foreman well. He says he's slow, he comes at you, he hits hard, and he throws wide punches, fight plan for Grimsley. He says to back up Foreman. Uh, Difficult thing to do. He says, I throw a lot of hard punches early, and yes, he has. None of them have hit anything except the air. Foreman says, I, the fear for me is not getting a fight with Tyson. He's the one guy that would slug it out with me. Of course, the last time I said that, it was Brian Axel Schultz off of me to George Foreman. Well, he wants to take a run at Tyson, especially after the road he sees Tyson has been taken. Angelo Dundee, the fabled Angelo Dundee in the corner now with George. Tyson taking on the likes of the uh, McNeely's, the Mathis's, Bruno, Sheldon. And, you know, we've been with George Foreman since the comeback started, and it looked to be a carnival in the early days when he came back at the age of 38 approaching would you believe 40 and still in the ring now he's approaching 50 and then he also talked about fighting tyson when he was available to fight again it seemed like uh, just a joke but uh, now it's starting to make sense when you consider what has been out there it certainly makes sense to george as an intriguing matchup but uh, this man is now 47 years old and uh, says for those, you know, who feel he should be retiring, he says, well, if somebody wants to stop me from boxing, let him whip me. Let him put me down on the canvas. I know some guy wants to be in there. Larry Holmes trying desperately to get a fight with Foreman. As a matter of fact, there's uh, some talk of that possibility since Larry has uh, coming out once again of retirement. And you would think the only reason he's coming out of retirement now is to get a little bit of a tune-up with the possibility of a foreman fight out there for him. And maybe that, that may be the only direction that George Foreman can go. He says, now that Tyson is out, I'm having trouble getting opponents. He says, why would they fight me for $50,000 when they can fight fate in front of Mike Tyson and get $5 million? George Foreman. Meanwhile, Grimsley uh, just hanging in there through the second round, trying to prove that uh, his record, uh, not just a light paper record of 20 and 0 against overwhelmed, low quality opponents. Matter of fact, there are no recognizable names on his ledger. Until tonight, that included his own name. Second round. Grimsley moving around wisely. A little of the Tommy Morrison approach when he fought the foreman and brought Tommy Morrison to victory. Just resetting. Yeah, Foreman, not a, a fighter who <laughs> likes the lateral movement. Grimsley's getting him now. Minute to go in the second. Foreman's got to pick up the combination. He's landing with the jab. Trying to get Grimsley to watch that jab. You set your opponent watching that left hand. Keep it going, wave it at them, and then crack them with the right hand. Come on, walk. Right, Angelo Dundee, the fabled trainer, asking Foreman to walk to him, cut the ring off, walk right to him, start with that jab off. Now 20 seconds to go in the second. 
Grimsley in his 20 fights has been past the second only five times. Grimsley coming in with the head of the chin of Foreman. Foreman making 400. Uh, so far, going through the motions of a, of a sparring session. He says his comeback has been more fun. He uh, hasn't had the pressure that he had when he was first coming up, when he was knocking everybody off, and he was expected to knock everyone out in the first couple of rounds. Now he is more relaxed in the ring, more at ease with himself. Well, here, here's a guy. This second career started at the age of 38. <laughs> to much ridicule. And George has made a fortune out of him. Become the heavyweight champion. He has transformed the once moody, disliked bad guy image to one of the most lovable, well-known, popular figures in sports history. Now he hasn't fought in a year and a half, but uh, you know he's been busy. He's been shooting commercials. He's been on all the talk shows, making appearances. And you know that this boxing stuff is starting to get in the way. <laughs> the top of the head of Grimsley. Crawford trying some of his combinations, none of them landing. George Foreman turned pro June of 69 out of the Olympics. And the career went seven years and nine months. He would win 45, lose two, with 42 knockouts. He was out for 10 years, then came back in 1987. And the second career now, nine and a half years, approaching 10 years. And he has won 29 and lost two, and regained the heavyweight championship of the world, nearing his 46th birthday. He does not talk of return. It's his birthday in January. Back it up, man. Back it up, man. That was, that was, that was, that was after he won the championship. More. All right, he beat more in November. Back it up. And then turned out 46 in January. I knew what you meant. Round number three of this scheduled 12 round fight. Ted Williams, uh, one of several baseball players who played that game over four decades. George Foreman turned pro in 69. He fought in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. And uh, who knows? Could be on his way to become a five decade fight. Harvey, the crowd thinks something's happening here. They sense Foreman putting more pressure on. Power behind his shots. Right hand. So getting down to George, getting down. He rotates real, extremely well with that right hand. Setting up the right hand with the jab. He is uh, now called the middle-aged Rocky. Geritol Kid, the role model to every baby boomer out there. Even me, as a young man when I was growing up, he lived with us in our home for a short period of time. Taught me never to read the press pieces. They're going to either build you up too high or put you down too low. Said you got to do your work when nobody's watching. Good uppercut for Foreman. He got up every morning and did his road work. Taught me a lot about boxing. Max Parker Jr., the referee in this one. Three rounds down, George Foreman. A long feeling out process against 29-year-old Crawford Grimsley. And Foreman uh, in his last few fights, you know, he's only had five fights in the last four years. And if you take a look at these fights, uh, Sean, you were saying the age uh, 
certainly catching up. Yes. Uh, the Alex Stewart fight, he got a, a win, but he ended the fight uh, with his uh, face completely battered, swollen jaw, bloody nose, sort of lumps, and was given the majority decision. Loses to Tommy Morrison. Michael Moore comes up with the dramatic, sensational knockout, but prior to that, you watched the fight, you thought it should have been stopped along the way that he was getting beaten up so bad. Yeah, yeah, getting hurt. He went on to knock out Moore in the 10th round with a terrific uppercut. The, uh, but yes, it is coming to an end. You see, you see his skills eroding round by round and fight by fight. No longer getting the big knockouts that he was getting that he was uh, early in fights, earlier in his life, well, in his career. You know, he's at the point now the opponents have changed. So Schultz, uh, obsessed by uh, Foreman, who was uh, given the win in that fight, a majority decision, 115-113 on two cards and 114-114 on the other. Ramsey had his best right hand just a moment ago. Good left hand from Foreman. Grimsley is certainly not at awe of uh, George Foreman. Grimsley ranked number nine by the WBA. George may be uh, trying to lull Grimsley uh, to sleep. We're giving him some uh, false impression here. We haven't even seen George snap that jab out that much here tonight. Grimsley is not used to going this far in a fight. He has 18 first round KOs. Crawford does. And pass the third round on three different occasions. So this right now, the fourth longest fight in the career of Crawford Grimsley, who did not have any amateur fights, so started his career at a late stage. It was two years ago at the age of 27. Come on! Has not faced many fighters with uh, records over the 500 mark. A couple of examples: Anislo Mahingas and Charles Hostetter. Hostetter was 16 and 8, but had lost five in a row, and won since 1986. And Mahingas was 24 and 17, but was kind of on the downside of his career. He had lost 11 of his last 14 and 10 of those by knockout. So, uh, Adding up the victories, but the question of who has he fought. Matter of fact, he knocked out a Perfecto Gonzalez, who was less than Perfecto that night, to win the Fecker Box title. That's the Central American and Caribbean Championships. And then, adding credibility to that title, he defended against John Morton, winning the fight, having won 11 of his 46 professional belts. Well, you know, that's uh, the tapes that they sent to George Foreman. They sent him his first few fights with Perfecto Gonzalez. Ron left. So he says George Foreman knows nothing about me. I know everything about George Foreman. Oh, there's the Foreman coming on. The, the shots are for Grimsley having no effect on Big George. Four rounds down. We move into round number five. And Grimsley still saying in front of Foreman. Foreman listening to the instructions. And in front of Angelo Dundee, Charlie Scheitz in his corner. Back to you. Charlie Scheitz is a terrific welterweight boxer. And I'm giving instructions to George. They have been working with that inswell around the eyes of, of George. Right there, you see the inswell that Angelo's putting on George. There's no swelling over there, but he wants to make sure. High area cool. You don't get him as well. Well, George giving the uh, fans here in Tokyo a little more for their money in this appearance. Back in 73, when he fought Joe King Roman. Put Roman down three times inside of two minutes of the fight. And it was stopped there. Here he moves into the fifth round. Wensley coming out. A strong punch downstairs to the body. Crawford again to the body and then up to the head. Good double hook by Crawford. One thing we're not seeing from George Foreman is the defense where he puts his lumberjack arms in front. The, uh, defense. 
Took from Archie Moore, what do you call it? The Armadillo? The Armadillo. Never heard that before. Yeah, Angelo Dundee too, I believe. Armadillo is making it up. Crawford Grimsley needs two. Stunning right hand before Grimsley back. And Crawford retreating. Oh, two shots upstairs by Foreman. There's the uh, uppercut inside, and Grimsley is hurt. Grimsley holding on. Now holding on. And he is standing right in front of George. George is just basically getting his gauge in this one. There's the snap of the, the jab. Yeah, look at this. Grimsley says, see you later. I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to wrestle with you. I'm not going to punch for punch with you. Walk around. This is my Tommy Morrison impersonation. Back it up, Jim. Back it up, George. Back it up, Rock. What did Max Parker mean by that? He said, back it up, gentlemen. Back it up, George. Making a distinction between the two. Jab, jab. When you don't know what to do, you got to get that jab going. Even Grimsley trying to use that jab to keep Foreman off of him. Nothing. George taking everything. Uh, Grimsley shot sliding off. Grimsley starting to get worn down here in the fifth. George looking for that roundhouse to the waist. Right there, the side of the body. Do you think Mike Tyson might be thinking? He's watching him right now, watching Foreman's performance here. He is probably thinking I wish I, had, I wish I would I were in Tokyo tonight Tokyo hasn't been good for Mike Tyson but uh, he's probably thinking you know, Mike Tyson is a very fast starter you saw George tonight in his start of this fight how extremely slow he was he says he still wants Tyson what are you talking about Bill Tyson Daryl Tyson Remember, uh, t uh, Foreman has been out for a year and a half his last fight. Okay. He's suffering from a bit of ring rust. He takes a left there, but then he comes back with his own right hand, chopping shot from George. See him turn the shoulder over? <laughs> Standing up in the corner. Won his first 40 fights, 37 by knockout, including the heavyweight title. In January of 73, when he went in as the three to one underdog against Joe Frazier, knocked Frazier down six times, and winning it at, at 135 of the second round in Kingston, Jamaica, then went to Tokyo to make his first defense against Joe King Roman. And then in Caracas, a second defense against Ken Norton at a second round knockout. And then his first loss, October of 74, 22 years ago, in Zaire, the rumble in the jungle. He stopped in eight rounds by Muhammad Ali. Yeah, lost it really devastated George Foreman. Going into that fight, he said there was no way I could be beat, even by Muhammad Ali. But Ali psyched out George. He used the rope dope effectively, and George crumbled in the eighth. George would be out of boxing for 15 months after that fight. And back with knockouts over Ryan Allen and, and Frazier again among four wins in that wild fight. Oh, wild fight. Great fight. fight. Great fight. Back and forth, give and take. Yeah, both fighters fight. going down in that one. Down and getting up. And uh, then Foreman lost to Jimmy Young, March of 1977. That was his last fight in career number one, retired. Went out as a former world champion, record of 45 and two with 42 knockouts. And he'll be out for 10 years before this remarkable story of a comeback that has now lasted nearly 10 years. Which is one 29 and lost two. His four losses in his career in 78 fights to Ali, Young, Evander Holyfield, and Tommy Morrison. 
vamos, vamos. La quiero en el pecho. Eso es. Eso es, caminando en Duca y Ramos. George, he is stalking. Trying to turn it up this round. Make Grimsley work. George, uh, but he's letting, he's letting Grimsley just walk out of the corner. Foreman says to Max Parr, what are you letting him do that for? Well, there's no... What could Max do? Yeah, there's no rule against moving. Yeah, right. There's no there's moving in this fight. There's no moving in boxing. That's what George is saying. It's not, it's not a lot. I want him to stand right here in front of me. Hold still so I can hit you. <laughs> There are people in the stands. Oh, he walks a lot. A very respective Japanese audience. No, but it's up to Foreman to make Grimsley fight. Foreman has to cut off the ring and make Grimsley fight. George in no hurry. Because I, while I'm in the ring, I might as well get a workout. 18 months since his last fight. Closing seconds of this round. George to go all night. I don't know if uh, that is the case with Crawford Grimsley. For us. <laughs> George needs to turn it up. Uh, I would say that it is time. You, what you do in so many fights is you walk your opponent down, you slow him down to a slow speed, and then you crack him. You really bring him fast, hard, debilitating punches. Foreman stands. Grimsley, the younger of the f two fighters, sits. Oh, Foreman comes out, saying the time has come, and the crowd responds to that. They've been waiting for that from George. Haven't seen any of his clubbing shots yet until that one there. Kind of get the feeling he needs just one good clubbing shot. There he tries again. Yeah, but he's going to have to put it together. He knows it. Combinations are what knocks Foreman's out. George is yet to raise to that next level. Oh, nice right hand from Grimsley. Grimsley has to get more of those going. Well, once again, the headbutt. George feeling it on his uh, head. Seventh round, it's scheduled for 12. No, 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 no. Stop Turn it over. Grimsley going backwards. Yeah, you see him breathing a little harder. Not really wanting to get in there. Any confrontation. He wants to score and move out. Uh, reaching to block that left uppercut to the body. Grimsley leaving himself open. You give your form and you faint that left hook to the body and then bring it upstairs. Amazing to think how confident that Crawford Grimsley was before the fight. Because uh, going to be Foreman, going to knock him out. How many times you've heard that from fighters going in against the likes of Foreman, against the likes of Larry Holmes, and then once they get in the ring, and they find out what the experience means. And the power means there's another headbutt for Grimsley. What the power, how it, how it changes inside the ropes. When you look at a fight and you know your own ability, you think there's no way. 
they're going to get in there. It's a different story. You, you don't realize he took some fun to tip back. When Foreman fought Muhammad Ali, he would not even think of being beaten in that fight. There was no way. Unheard of. And surprisingly shocking. 30 seconds to go in round number seven. 